to the distinguished pastor, Reverend Dr. Brown, and to the distinguished clergyman that sit with us on the dais. We are certainly very happy to greet you again in the name of the Lord. Lord has blessed us and protected us and brought us a long way. Mm -hmm. the gentleman in the red tie sitting up here is a long time friend of mine. We were young men together Amen. in the struggle. Mm -hmm. If you are fortunate enough to get any pictures of Dr. Martin Luther King around 1963, 64, 65. Almost every picture of Dr. King will have Bernard Lee on it. I, I don't ever recall seeing Dr. King when Bernard wasn't with him. Uh, he was more than a valet, he was an aide. And uh, Dr. King had ways of making you feel like a valet. And Bernard, go get me a glass of water. <laughs> Bernard, go get my necktie. And he didn't care who he was. Uh, he would do the same to Dr. Abernathy. <laughs> Ralph, bring me my shoes. <laughs> Used to like to go barefoot. He, I, I, I discovered, I didn't know him as a youngster, but he must have went barefoot because time he'd get in the hotel room, he'd kick his shoes off. <laughs> he'd walk around, would never remember where he left his shoes. And he would call Dr. Abernathy to try to locate his shoes. <laughs> Bernard was in the heat of that struggle. There was danger there because he was right at his side, right on up until the last day in Memphis. Uh, so many times men walk in our midst and they are with us and we have no idea who they are. <laughs> We, we have no idea of what there, he could have written a book and it could have been a bestseller mm -hmm. because there are things that he could reveal and relate that no one has been able to say because they don't know he was mm -hmm. there. He has not chosen to do that. Mm -hmm. He has walked very humbly in your midst. I would that the pastors in this city would be very kind to Bernard Lee because mm -hmm. he has paid his dues. Mm -hmm. He has paid his dues. <laughs> and I'm sure there are many times when he thought that he would not live to see the next day. But he uh, never shrinked from his responsibility. Mm. Happy to see the very proud pastor of the Paramount Baptist Church here, the Reverend Ishmael Shaw mm -hmm. from out in southeast Washington. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're happy to see him. There are others that have come out to be with us each night. And uh, now I'm going to tell you, I rode in that chariot again tonight. So. <laughs> If I don't get to have me ride in the chariot, and the only way I could have got in closer, he'd had to drive on in the lobby, you all see? He parked it right at the steps. Amen. He, yeah, I thought he was going to back on up in there. Amen. They can beat it, don't fool around. He gets you right on into the door. He pulled up in front of the Diplomat Hotel and... They thought I was somebody stepping out of there. <laughs> Stepped in that big, long, white Lincoln with the spare tie on the back. 
I sit back in the back seat and cross my legs. <laughs> holding my arm. Amen. He brought me right on in here. That's my... You know, the Lord's people ought to have some of the finer things in life, too. Amen. 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 The world begrudges the Lord's folk for having some of the finer things, but I'm sure he paid his dues. And with the Aberdeen and Al, I see him. He came out tonight. Grays are here, long-time friends of mine. Aunts for many, many years. They've known me since I was about 10 years old. You can look at my head and tell I was a long time ago. <laughs> And uh, we're very happy to see them. Happy to see all of you that have come, many that we can't call by name. Uh, I don't know if we're going to do the dogs or not this week. Uh, in case I don't preach the dogs, I brought enough tapes for everybody to get one. <laughs> and brought some videos for a few people that might want to put it on their videotape uh, recorder. Uh, we have them here. Uh, the tape we did Monday night, I'm very anxious that you not just take that lightly. Those of you that have young people in school, you need to get that tape. Or it's talking about our heritage as a people. Mm -hmm. It's talking about our roots. And I would not that you would uh, let this opportunity pass. These tapes are not in the record store. They're not available. We've had some difficulty with our distribution. Therefore, that these tapes, after I leave here this week, the only place you'll get them is to write me in Buffalo, New York for them. The record stores, when they exhaust their present supply, will not be able to reorder. I will have them. So don't let this opportunity pass. They are here this week, and they are going to be available each evening after church. Look through that supply of tapes and get some that you might have some things no one else has and buy extra ones, so if your friend want to borrow one, you can say, I got one just for you, and sell it to them. <laughs> and don't let them take your tape, because they won't bring it back. <laughs> Amen? Amen. No, they won't bring it back. So I want to you do that. I autographed some for some people last night, and we'd be happy to do it for you tonight. The, the tape on the dogs are here, and we have them. And we don't know which way we're going the rest of the week. I'm just trying to let the Lord use me. Mm -hmm. And to let the Lord direct me. Uh -huh. On tomorrow night, if it be the Lord's will, mm -hmm. I want to talk uh, from the subject of the next sermon that I'm going to release on our, through our record chain. It's called A Big Man in a Bad Shape. Mm -hmm. Big Man in a Bad Shape bad shape. We're going to release that sermon. I'm going to record it live right here mm. tomorrow night. I'm going to record it. Whatever happens tomorrow night, that's what's going to go out over there. <laughs> that's what's going to go out. I'm going to record that sermon live from New Hope. Mm -hmm. And you, you want to be here to be a part of that live audience, don't you? Amen. So when you hear it on the radio, you can say, I was there. I was there. God has smiled on me. He
Meditations of our heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Beginning at the third chapter, that first verse says, Then the Lord said unto me, Go again and love a woman who is loved by a lover and is committing adultery, just like the love of the Lord for the children of Israel, who look to other gods and love the raisin cake of the pagans. Mm. So I bought her for myself for 15 shekels of silver mm -hmm. and one and one half homer of barley. Well. And I said to her, you shall stay with me for many days. You shall not play the harlot, nor shall you have another man, so too will I be toward you. Hosea 3, 1 through 3. I can't stop loving you. All right, that's all right. <laughs> can't stop loving you. Uh, 
love is one of the most overworked words and under misunderstood words in our human language. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Isn't that right? That's right. That's right. We use it so frequently mm -hmm. until we sometimes do not uh, consider the significance of what that word means. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That little four-letter word mm -hmm. carries with it a lot of power. Yes, sir. All right. I saw a bumper sticker once and riding down the road and it said, make love, not war. Yes. The significance of that was that love is powerful enough to stop war. Mm -hmm. Bernard, one of Dr. King's very early books that he wrote was Strength to Love. Yes. Uh -huh. For he realized very early that no matter how the white segregationists and the white supremacists were treating black people in the South, we still had to love them. Yes. He won the mandate and he was greatly misunderstood by the black Muslims, and that was one of the points of uh, dissension between him and some of the leaders of that faith, right. Malcolm X uh, especially. Mm -hmm. Malcolm disagreed with the philosophy of loving your enemy. Yeah. His philosophy was you kill your enemy. Yeah before he kills you. But we are under a mandate to love because God is love. Isn't that right? What is love? Someone once wrote that love is a feeling of strong personal attachment induced by sympathetic understanding with regard to tender affection. Another one less astute said that love is an itching at the heart and you can't scratch it. One more cynical said love is a misunderstanding between two fools. been many who have tried to define what love is. But we must realize that God is love. God is the author of love and God is the origin of love. And before we can begin to know what love is and before we can begin to try to understand love and to experience love, we have to first know God. It is not possible to reach the depth of love without a knowledge of God. No matter how good your husband is to you and no matter how nice he is and no matter how many times he tell you that he loves you, if he does not know God in the free pardon of his sin, he does not know how to love you. He does not. I, I imagine he wants to, he desires to, he has a strong feeling of, of attachment toward you, but he cannot reach the depths of love because he does not know the author of love. We must first know God before we can know anything about love. For God is love. I wish I had a witness here. We, we know something about the different types of love. Uh, there is parental love 
that love that parents have for their children and that love that children have for their parents. That is a love that is brought about by dependency because one protects and secures and provides and that kind of attachment. And because we are told that there is a strong biological bond between these individuals, that their blood flows in your veins and that their genes determine what your personal makeup is. So there's a strong uh, attachment to them. Isn't that right? Yes. Then there is a love that is a romantic love. Uh -huh. The Greeks looked at this thing of love and they felt as if that they needed to break that down and to define love in three categories. Yes. And they came up with eros, filio, and agape. Yes. Yes. And they said that eros was a kind of fleshly, physical, emotional love, a love that comes from, uh, I love you because you are nice and you are attractive and I love you because you have a nice figure and I love you because you have a head full of pretty hair. I love you because you have smooth, pretty skin. That kind of eros love. But that is the wrong basis to love someone. Isn't that right? If you fall in love, brethren, with a young lady because she has a 22-inch waist, can I get a witness? What, what, what are you going to do when uh, well, well, well. she gets a 42 inch wing? Can I get a witness here? What, what's going to happen to your love? You, you, you fell in love with her beautiful figure. Well, she had a Coca-Cola shape at 23. But how does it look at 53? That's a dangerous kind of love. You fell in love with your husband because he had a head full of curly hair at 26. But what are you going to do at 66? Can I get a witness? Amen. When his hair is gone. It's a dangerous thing to fall in love based on because of romantic love. Then they said there is a brotherly love. Filio. Uh, we have a city called Philadelphia called the city of brotherly love. Uh, 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 how do you know that you've been called and from the darkness unto the marvelous light? Because I love the brethren. Amen. Because I love the brethren. That, that kind of love that we love each other in a brotherly, sisterly fashion. That love has no sexual connotations to it. That love has no erogenous attachments to it. That is a brotherly and sisterly love. A sibling type love. And that's the love that Jesus wanted us to have for each other. The children love ye one another. Hey, can I get a witness here? Uh, the Greeks recognized that there was that kind of love. And then they said there is another love. And that love they called agape. That is love in spite of. Can I get a witness here? That, that is the kind of love that God has toward man. That's the kind of love that uh, will cause you to love on and on and on and on. For in 1 Corinthians, Paul said that that kind of love is kind. And it, it is slow to lose patience. 
He said that that kind of love is not possessive. Mm -hmm. Talking about my this and my that and uh -huh. my this and my that. And, but it should be our. Yeah. Isn't that right? I, I recall uh, one time when I was in my family room one evening and I had a great big lazy boy chair that I enjoy reclining in after I come in from church and get me a tall glass of lemonade and get my control for my television and I sit there in that big chair and I watch TV a while and TV watch me a while. You know about that, don't you, brother? I didn't get but one chair. I discovered that was a mistake later. For one evening, I got up to go to the refrigerator to make me a sandwich. And while I was gone, my wife sat in the chair. And I came back with my sandwich and I was looking at my chair and looking at her. And I said, well, what are you doing? She said, I'm sitting in our chair. but I didn't expect that, that I were to go that far. <laughs> Love is not possessive. It is not selfish. Love is long-suffering. It is not easy provoke that kind of love. There are some people that will fly off the handle at anything. And it is long lasting. The written word may fail. Mm -hmm. The spoken word may fail. Mm -hmm. But love will never fail. Yes, True love. Love, I tell you, is in spite of, yes. not because of. Yes. It's easy to love your husband if he's sweet and yes. gentle and kind mm -hmm. and caring and faithful and honest and I mean, it's easy, but what about if he's a grand rascal? Can I get a witness here? And if he's running all over the place, here, there, and everywhere, do you love him or do you pack up and go home to mama? Can I get a witness here? I, my grandmother, I was reared by my mother and my grandmother. And the year I was born, they got a tomcat. And they brought that tomcat to the house. And I grew up with that tomcat. Mm -hmm. And as I got to five, six, seven, Tom had a birthday right along with me. And many nights when I would be cozy and comfortable around the heater, my grandmama would send me out to look for Tom. And I didn't like that. I didn't care for getting up, going out. I never have cared for the dog. <laughs> and I think if you know in the South, there were no street lights. I'm running all across the, the hills, hollering, Tom, here, Tom, Tom, here, Tom. I'd run, and after a while, I'd hear noise. He'd shoot past me, heading for the house. I chased Tom while he was seven then. Eight, nine, ten. I turned eleven. Tom wasn't gone quite as often. And I turned twelve, and Tom was closer to the house. And then, when I had my thirteenth birthday, Tom would be right there under the rocking chair. He, if I'd rock back, I'd rock on his tail. I never had to go look for Tom anymore. I, I was a grown man before I realized what had happened. I, I'm understanding that brethren a little better every day. <laughs> uh, 
I'm, I'm understanding why Tom stayed home more and more. I, I tell you, if you can just hold on, Tom will be home. Can I get a witness here? You and the boys going bowling or going, doing something? He in the way. Got to pick his feet up to mop on them, to sweep on them, run the vacuum. Amen. And if you can just hold on, Tom got more money now than he used to have. I, I can get a witness here. <laughs> He doesn't have as much to spend his money on as he used to. Well, you, you'll find the bank account just keeps swelling and growing it. You won't be able to figure where all that money coming from. Amen? It was all because you were long suffering. Because you had enough sense to wait. Can I get a witness? Amen. Love is long-suffering. True love and honest love is long-suffering. It is patient. Amen. And, and, and. But in our text tonight here, uh, God had been hurt by man. And he wanted his prophets to know how it felt yeah, yeah. to be betrayed and to be hurt mm -hmm. by a people that you love. Yeah. Yeah. All right. God, God loved Israel uh -huh. yeah, yeah. with a great love. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But Israel had committed great whoredom. Mm -hmm. And it hurt him, for he had said to them that uh, I am the Lord thy God, and, and thou shalt serve the Lord, uh, and him only shall thy serve. The Lord always desired that Israel would be a monogamous people. And they had gone after other gods, and that had hurt him greatly. There was great pain and great hurt in him, and Hosea wanted to be a prophet of the Lord. Yeah. Hosea wanted, to, amen, to be a prophet, and God said to him that if you want to be a prophet, you first must know uh, how it feels yeah. to be hurt well. by somebody that you love. Yeah. Hosea lived during the reign of Uzziah and Jotham and Ahaz and Hezekiah and Jeroboam and Joash. All of these were kings under which uh, the period of which his prophecy extended. And, and he said to him, said, I'll tell you what I want you to do. I want you to go and marry uh, a prostitute. Take unto thee a wife of great whoredom and children of whoredom, for the land has committed great whoredom. And so Hosea went down on the corner. And there was a beautiful girl down there that was known in our jargon as a streetwalker. Her name was Goma. She had skin smooth as silk. Mm -hmm. She had hair that was long down her back, black as a thousand midnights. Uh -huh. She had eyes that danced with fire and lips that was red as fire and dripped with honey. Yeah. Yeah. Hosea. Mm -hmm. yes, looked at the daughter of Diblium, 
said to her, will you be my wife? And for some reason, this young lady said yes. And she left her profession, put it on hold, and went home with the preacher to be his wife. That was a passion-filled relationship. It wasn't long thereafter that they had a son. And they named this boy Jezreel, which meant God planted. He was so happy and he was convinced that it was a relationship that came from God. But as in many instances of marriage, the fires on the altar of love began to cool after a few months. No different in this relationship. Uh, after a while, strangers began to come around his house. You can imagine him coming home finding strange men at his house. He could probably tell for he found that Goma was having more and more headaches. Can I get a witness here? Seems as if the fires were cooling. But in the midst of this on and off relationship, this young lady became in a motherly way again. And this time she had a daughter. Who they named this young girl Laruhama. That is interpreted not much love. It might be mine. And it might not be mine. But he kept on loving her. And long after a while, I can imagine that the marital relations discontinued completely. Mm -hmm. which is not so unusual if we had the powers of seeing behind the locked doors of a lot of our own parishioners. We would find that there have been months and yes, even years of abstinence in those homes. There was no marital bliss in that bedroom at all. More and more, he now found her gone from home, and more and more, there were strangers in his home. Can I get a witness here? Yeah. But in the midst of that, Goma became in an expectant way again. This time, Hosea had no doubt about what the condition was. She gave birth to a son. And he named that boy Lower Me. No kin of mine. God said, Ye are not my people. And I will not be your God. Soon after Goma left, went back to her own profession, left Hosea there with those children. He then had to raise those children without the presence of their mother while she applied her tree back in her former profession. But I come to tell you tonight, I can imagine that he never did stop loving her. When he would go in to lay down at night, seemed like he could see the place in the bed where she lay, where a long black hair would cover the pillow, and seemed like he could inhale the fragrance of her beautiful perfume whether it was opium, uh, whether it was obsession, or whatever the aroma that she was wearing, a poison, or whatever, 
It seemed that a rumor would intoxicate his nostrils and as he would be in that room, he could hear the soft whisper of her voice and he never forgot about her and he always had that fire burning for her in his bosom, but he knew that Goma was happier where she was than where he wanted her to be. Weeks turned into months. Months turned into years. My Bible tells me that long last one day, after many years have passed, he sent the children to check on their mother, see how she was faring. Children brought back a sad report they said to him that mother has been sold in to domestic service. She is on the slave block to be sold. Mother had lost her beautiful figure now. Time has dug furrows in her face. Her hair that once was coal and black is now streaked with gray. Her figure now that was once toned and tanned has now lost its elasticity. And she is not desirable of men anymore. And they have her own the slave block. I can imagine Hosea said to them, how much are they asking for? They said they want 15 shekels of silver. And they are asking a homer and a half of barley. Can't you see this preacher go out to the barn and put a homer and a half of barley in his wagon. Can't you see him go into his bedroom and look there in his drawer and count out 15 shekels of silver? Got in his wagon and went down to the city square where Goma was on the slave block. I can imagine he said to himself, I don't care what you've done, I still love you. When he got down there, he shelled out the 15 pieces of silver. And he paid a homer and a half of barley. And the Bible says, so I bought her to me for 15 pieces of silver. And for a homer and a half of barley. Yeah. Can I get a witness? Yeah. And I said unto her, Thou shalt abide with me for yeah. many days. Yeah. Thou shalt not be for another man. Yeah. Now so will I also be for you. Yeah. I can imagine that this uh, woman said, Jose, I'm not worthy to be your wife. Jose, I've been with other men since I left you. But I can imagine him say, hush, I don't want to hear any more about it. All I want to tell you is I can't stop loving you to save my life. Can I get a witness? A uh, man had played the harlot on God. So when Hosea got to that point, the Lord told him, now you're ready to be a prophet of mine. But you know how I feel about Israel. Amen. I, I sent them down into Egypt because of disobedience. And I loved them still, and I had Moses to bring them out. 
And uh, they sinned before they were a hundred miles from the flesh pots of Egypt. Uh, and they went right back in the sin. I sent them down into Babylon and left them down there for 70 years because they had gone into sin again. But they kept right on sinning when I brought them out of Babylon. I sent them Noah with a flood and thought that I could give the world a house cleaning. But Noah got drunk before the ground got dry. Can I get a witness? I sent David with his songs, but David fell into sin himself. But I kept on loving them. I sent Jeremiah with his tears, but they kept right on singing. I sent Isaiah with his invitations, but they kept right on sinning. Can I get a witness? They kept on sinning, and I kept on loving them because I couldn't stop loving them to save my life. Yeah! Finally, I went into voluntary exile for 400 years. There was no preaching for 400 years. There was no prophesying for 400 years. There was no singing for 400 years. There was no praying for 400 years. There was no writing. Yeah! I thought man would get his act together. Yeah! Well, yeah! And then one day, Justice said to me, why you keep messing around with man? Man won't do right. Why don't you give him justice? Yeah! I called a conference in heaven. I had the seraphim on one side and the cherubim on the other side. Jesus was at one end of the table and God sat at the head of the table. Time sat on one side and justice sat beside time. My sad sat on one side and grace sat beside me.
Come on, church, help me set it. Well, 